Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, and you just heard Jill mm -hmm. Bryant. How's it going? We're back. Yeah. Exciting things to talk about this week. <laughs> I love your sweatshirt, Vin. I just noticed it. What? My little T-Rex? <laughs> it's so cute. It's Christmas. He's got like yeah. a little Christmas sweater on. Yeah. It's adorable. I love it. <laughs> Ugly sweater, but cute. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? Oh boy. So I actually stayed up all night Monday to Tuesday morning watching the talks at Ubuntu Summit in Prague in Czechoslovakia. And our very own Strider, creator of Lutris, he did an awesome talk called Linux as a Video Game Preservation Platform. Strider, I was did... watching you on Discord on your way to Prague. I was yes. Like, okay, where are you going to mess this up? Where are you going to mess this up? I was rooting for you, though. I was rooting for you, by the way. And you made it. You made it. No, he he did a wonderful job. I, honestly, I think it was one of the best talks he had ever done. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and not too long a time either. He got everything he wanted to say, you know, uh, in about a half hour. It was great. <laughs> nice, concise talk. Yeah. Pretty decent. I got to go back and watch that. Where can we watch that, Joe? Um, at the uh, Ubuntu website, there's a website that you can go and watch watch the video stream from. I don't know it off by heart, but I can put it in our show notes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and yeah, there were a lot of really good talks there, including one from Michael Tunnell, who I work with um, and co-host with on the Destination Linux podcast. He did, he did a great uh, talk on open source marketing done right. And that was really helpful. A lot of, a lot of good engagement with the audience on that one too. Right on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'll look forward to uh, <laughs> Jill digging out that URL. So I don't. Have yeah. To. <laughs> I have it. I've, I've, I've got it. I just right. don't know the name of it. <laughs> Let's see. What have we been up to? Oh, if you didn't keep track on, uh, we kind of had a interesting time. Um, when was it? Saturday night. Saturday night, I told everybody right before we started the show, I'm like, yo, so I kind of spilt like a solid tablespoonful of tea and an HDMI splitter that's connected to this box. Uh, that Jill's yeah. <laughs> that's the box I use for Jill and Jordan in the studio. And uh, it's like, there, everybody keep an eye on it. And if you could, if you were watching live, you could tell by the end of the um, first segment that we did on Linux Team Guest Weekly, it was starting to spaz out a little bit. You know, I took it apart and I cleaned out. Like, okay, it was fine. By the way, I knocked over some tea in here, which I've done, I think, twice. I don't put anything in the tea, unfortunately. I'm like on the glass desk at all. It mostly just like held right at the edge. Yeah. With just tension. Like, <laughs> okay, that's good. But apparently someone dripped into the HDMI uh, splitter, which is on like, I got a wall of HDMI stuff. There's like 13 cables back there. So I took it apart. And I, you know, blew it out. I didn't even put the case back on. It was like just hanging, dangling. And I'm like, hey, it's working. Leave it on and we'll see. And it died and I had to swap it out. Oh, yeah. And with glass, you know, the water just kind of ripples and it goes. Well, it had dripped down and... into it over the edge. Okay. And it was like, man, and that was bugging me. So it was the uh, first thing I did Sunday morning when I got up. Like, I don't want to buy another H. And these are cheap HDMI splitters, too. These are like the little $14 ones that have been on 24 7 for like six years. Like, there's, they've done mm -hmm. their job. I took it back apart and I like emptied some contact cleaner in it. And I got my toothbrush out and I gave it a, I brushed its teeth, its little circuit teeth. Yeah. And I, Blew out the HDMI cable, plugged it, started working again. There it is. It, it's working right now. It's very excited about that. I don't know why, but yeah, I, I didn't want to because I know. Okay, I, here's why I was excited about it. Because I know the HDMI splitter that I'm replacing everything with is the ones from SIG. Uh, and they're crazy expensive. Like mm. they are, um, you know, they do the 4K, 3D, HDR, and all the stuff, EDID, memorization, and they can do like breakdowns and stuff like that. And they're like 60 bucks a piece. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to buy a $60 HDMI splitter, so I don't have to. But all of that, I just told you, was stalling because I wanted to show you this picture. Ah, yes. There we go, Ben. Ben did something uh, cool that a lot of people would, would find useful. <laughs> no one would find it useful, Joe. <laughs> Probably not me. Never. But no. <laughs> Not in a million years. What, what we're seeing for the audio listeners is, you know, things I get up to around the house, like installing Telnet on a digital camera. Why? I have my reasons. I have my secrets mm -hmm. and I might keep them. No, I won't keep them. 
what I am doing is I found a particular camera that is awesome in every possible way, except you can't use it for live streaming like we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. It's got HDMI out too, and it does 1080p out. It's got interchangeable lenses and it's 20 plus megapixels, but you plug HDMI cable into it. That's got all the overlay stuff on it and there's no way to get rid of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's always, yeah. A pain. <laughs> so it might be running Android, which means that it's pretty easy to get around that enough mm-hmm. to maybe get some telnet installed on it. Maybe to uh, modify that firmware a little bit and get rid of that overlay. Yeah. Very good. So very good, Ben. Um <laughs> stay tuned for that video that I'm working on. So uh yeah, what I was talking about in the pre-show, if you've been planning on buying a um like a DLSR or something like that for live streaming, hold off. Hold off because there's a glut of these things available. Why? Because you can't use them for live streaming. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Not because they're bad. Yeah. And it just turns out that uh, they were like, you know what? Uh, if you give us like 300 more dollars, we'll remove that artificial restriction. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Right? And so, yeah, let's just flip that switch and uh, <laughs> use it and keep things like that out of the landfill. Yeah. That makes me happy right there. You know, less <laughs> e-waste, less e-waste, man. That like victory lap plus people get to get cool stuff. I'm yeah. down with that now. It's uh, one of the reasons why I have the Sony Alpha 6400 is because it doesn't. Ha- you can turn off the overlay, which is nice, and it's it's great for streamers. But it's made for you know this uh, this job of streaming. <laughs> the Alpha series are pretty decent cameras. I use the uh, Nikon D3400. That's mm-hmm. what I have in here. But like my Nikon, you know, I've done. I did that video on like how to get this thing to stay online. Nikon's fine with any type of uh, DLSR or, um, you know, cropped or full frame mirrorless, which yeah. everything is now. Uh, it's all about the glass mm-hmm. that's on the lens. Like if you got your pack in lens, it's going to look like, you know, whatever camera it is with the pack in lens. Like this Nikon's got a $600 lens on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a $200 camera, but I had a bunch of uh, glass sitting around from my, you know, from remember previous. the early, yeah, my old Nikon D80. Mm hmm. And I bought a bunch of glass for that. And I'm like, ooh, you know what? I have a prime lens. Click that on. There you go. <laughs> oh, I stop. Works great. But stay tuned for that. Bunch of fun things in the pipeline. Now, oh. also come play Trackmania with us. We're doing oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. This Friday, I updated two maps. We had our Trackmania thing last night, which we dumped 14 new maps. We get together, we go around them, we vote on them. And it's a good way to be able to see, hey, who can't make it around? Or like a lot of people are not going to have fun with this one. That's how we experiment. And then I swap those back out. Server stays up 24 (laughs) seven. You don't even have to show up if you're like, I just want to kind of compete, but I don't want to hang out with everybody. You can pop on the server whenever you want. It keeps track of everybody's time for all time and eternity. We, you know, but yeah, it's a good time. We'll be back Friday doing rounds, doing points, having a good time. 7.30 PM Eastern. Check it out. Twitch.tv forward slash Lang Seamcast. There's a schedule button, even a link to the new page. Now, Oh, and thank you, Artharen. He put the uh, the link for the uh, Ubuntu Summit Talks. And you can go to the YouTube channel, Ubuntu On Air. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Now, dun dun dun, dun. <laughs> What happened to Signal oh, Don't Stop? Oh, boy. No more snap, then. <laughs> Some things have happened, man. Uh, apparently... At the beginning, well, October 10th of last month, uh, the Signal Desktop Snap from Snapcraft.io disappeared, Jill. It went away. It was gone. Uh, and it remained gone for almost a month with no information. Like, hey, what's going on with this? What's going on? Nobody knew. And, you know, a little while later, on the 15th, uh, somebody from the Snapcraft project came in and was like, hey, by the way, um... You know, something mm-hmm. happened. I'm not going to tell you what, but yeah, Snap Store Manager had to remove it in accordance with their policies. That's it. That's all we got. Shrug emoji. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, turns out the guy responsible for uh, the maintainer for the Snap, he was like, hey, uh, that was more information than uh, he got when he asked. He was like, why was my package removed from Snapcraft? 
And they're like, oh, they never wrote him back. Yeah. And it turns out a bit later, come find out. The con- thrilling conclusion to our story is uh, the snap maintainer comes back and he's like, hey, it turns out it was a DMCA takedown request from Signal. We're talking about the Signal desktop app. Canonical, they're currently working with Signal to resolve everything. Mm-hmm. There was a communications breakdown. Yeah. And that took place. And, you know, hey, happy ending. The Signal desktop thing is back Woo-hoo. and ready to go. Couple of things on this, though. And even the maintainer of the project said, I didn't change anything in the package either. It's not like they came back and asked, hey, you need to fix this, this, and this, and this. What happened is where I found this. This made it to Hacker News. And it got blow, blew up on Hacker News and a bunch of comments on it. And Signal had to go, oh, maybe not. Maybe we don't want to tangle with this beehive. And a couple of ways to look at this because you, you got to consider this, you know, the snap version of the signal is unofficial. Mm-hmm. Doesn't come yeah. from signal at all. And signals, like it or not, they're well within their rights to be like, hey, uh, we didn't authorize anybody to redistribute our Debian package by the way they offer a Debian package. Yeah, that's what I use on, on my desktop. Yeah, and you just punch mm-hmm. it right in. And coming from that, I got to feel that the signal developers I feel this just a little bit like we do have a Debian package and we know how to provide support for that Debian package. We have no idea. And, you know, even if you got it from, what is it? Snapcraft? Yeah, Snapcraft. Yeah, Snapcraft. IO, really up to date on the Snap technology. Here, I don't have any I'm not. But uh, even if you downloaded it and you had a problem with it, logically, where do most people end up going for support? Signal. Signal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's well, going on here? Why can't I get my snap? <laughs> I could, uh, I can genuinely imagine this not being malicious as we're upset that they're redistributing our dev. I could very much see this being like, we're tired of answering support questions about something we don't, because even as a business, you don't want to turn that person away. You still want them to use your product. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, it got resolved. This is a good thing. That's a good news. And Canonical has said they're going to update their uh, contact policy. So the next time, and there will be a next time, yeah, you know, some company or project, you know, just yeah. smites an unofficial repackaged snap from the store, they will at least notify the maintainer. Yeah. No, that I am so happy about this. I mean, I, I, like I said, I use the deb on the desktop, and then on my phone, I use you know just downloaded it from the Play Store. Yeah. So, but it's also there's also a flat pack. There is a flat pack, which yeah. is not official either. So yeah. let's be fair. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but the deb I knew was official, so that that's the one I. Installed. They have the um yeah I went and checked Signal. I don't use Signal personally, but I did a little bit of research into this when I was following as the story was unfolding this week. I'm yeah. Like, what happened? Because when I first started. Putting this in the notes, we had no idea what was going on. It's like, poof, mm-hmm. it just disappeared. I'm like, oh, something's yeah. up. And, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, gossip, tech gossip. Let's get on this. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's kind of benign. And, you know, it exposed, like, two things you got to keep in mind. Um, and, you know, I see this even when I'm helping somebody with, like, working with OBS. You know, because I get tons of questions. From that how do i do x y z and we're not talking like oh i can't make x thing work and it's like how do i route audio from this using jack to, you know stuff like that yeah i get those questions and um i always ask i'm like are you using flat pack version even though it's official now are you using a snap and if the answer mm-hmm. to that is yes i say not my problem yeah <laughs> no support from ben <laughs> no I don't do that. It's there's nothing no. malicious about that whatsoever. I'm not doing yeah, a victory understand. lap. I'm like, oh, containers are bad. It's like both of those are going to have different problems. Absolutely. Yeah. That you know, just compiling it from source or running it from you know a Debian package is not going to experience. And I don't know the answers to that. You know, again, mm-hmm. it's not anything malicious. And I can see signal yeah. going from like we don't want to have to maintain this in some way to capacity to support it. But then again, it could have just been straight up pettiness on Signal's part going, you know, you can't redistribute that. We didn't give you any authorization to redistribute our Debian package in any shape, form, or fashion. It's it's kind of a dumb move, as they learned. That doesn't work very good on the PR side. Um, But hey, 
some good came out of it. They, uh, you know, Snapcraft is going to rework how they communicate, which is good. I'd like to see if they had um, special, like, DMCA type stuff. I like how Microsoft does it at GitHub, where they just post it. Like, mm. here's the DMCA. Here's the yeah. reason. Look at it. You know, just to avoid that week, two weeks of mystery of, or, you know, accordance with our policies. Like, come on. Let's mm-hmm. not do that. Good news, Jill. Yeah. Yeah. So Nitrix OS is one of my, is actually one of my uh, favorite and most innovative and beautiful Debian base distros available. So what is your least favorite? <laughs> like all the distros that's what makes linux awesome is we have choice <laughs> but this one uh, uh has just been upgraded so nitrix has just been upgraded to version 2.5 and uh, i've been running it on one of my laptops be- behind me for quite some time and what's unique there's a lot of unique things about this distro bin so the first is that this distro is free of system d Yes, there is Debwan and some other distros that have that. But this one is based on app images and has its own awesome desktop called the NX desktop, which I have really been growing uh, to love. It's it's a little bit like a combination to me of KDE and GNOME together. <laughs> has some nice features of, of both. And uh, what's also nice is this new version of Nitrix OS 2.5 has the latest Linux kernel 6.0, and it uses tech from KDE 5.26.2. And their NX desktop is an overlay on KDE Plasma using the MAUI kit framework and apps. So another thing that makes this distro unique and one of the reasons why I've been enjoying using it because it's unique and different and very innovative. And it includes a whole library of its own apps, you know, built using the MAUI framework and uh, which actually includes one of my favorite file managers, the MAUI index file manager, which is really nice for bookmarking folders and files and organizing um, all your files. I really enjoy that uh, file manager. And the NX Software Center actually contains plenty of app image package software, including things like Skype and Google Chrome, you know, as well as the MAUI apps. And there are preloaded tools to install Steam, the itch.io game store, the bottles wrapper for wine, and even an NVIDIA driver installer. So, you know, this it, it's got lots of innovation in there, and I recommend everyone trying this distro. It's not necessarily for beginners, but uh, it's it's for those have been those of you who have been using Linux a long time, it's it's got some features that we've wanted in other distros. Joe, if you've been using Linux for a long time, you get enough sense to stay away from something like this. This no, is app image based. No. <laughs> I got an operating system to do work, not to play around. Oh, you mean people yeah. who install operating systems to play with? Got it. Oh, well, I do both. I have my my machines, like my my uh, broadcasting rig, uh, streaming rig, right now. That's you know a bunch too stable. But then I test all the other. Uh, Linux distros on on all hundreds of computers that I own, <laughs> so I, I, mean, I use them it. as a well, platform. <laughs> when you substitute the word test for play, it sounds a lot more professional. Now let's take a look at a distribution <laughs> for what it is. It's app images all wrapped together, kind of like That's... Fedora Silver Blue. And you got to think about uh... that. What Silver Blue? I never heard about it. It's a distribution made with flat pack technology from the fine fine folks at Red Hat. Mm-hmm. However, this is the first to use all app images. <laughs> even better cool. than that. Yeah. <laughs> this, like the flat pack, it's using the app images, predates Fedora Silverblue by full True. Year. True, look Vin. That up. Now, yeah. looking up uh, OpenRC as a service manager, that's maintained by Gen 2 developers. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? System D1, face it. Let it go. It's a piece of yeah. software. It's not a religion. It's not a cult. 
Um, <laughs> system D's been around for a long time. I'm not going to fight you over this, but I'm not going to mess. You know, I, I know how to use system D. System D's in Debian. Yeah. Like, if it makes it to Debian, it won. Yeah. Ven doesn't live the uh, Dev1 lifestyle of free of system D Debian. <laughs> No, Jill, I got stuff to do again. I use my operating system to get stuff done. I, it's work. It's not play. It's not philosophy. It's not politics. It's like, it's an operating system and I need it to work and I need it to work correctly. System yeah. D, as much as I still generally dislike it, it works, mm -hmm. right? And then I listen really to somebody yeah. who has a lot more knowledge and know-how Jordan, who deals in, day in and day out professionally with System D, having worked with that, he's like, it's, it's good. Like, it solves a lot of problems. I'm like, I'll, I'll listen to Jordan before I listen to some other guy. I don't like yeah. it. Why? Because the internet said I just shouldn't like it. <laughs> the internet said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's not. Uh, go check it out. We're, we're, what's their website, Jill, if anybody wants to play with us? It is uh, um, Nitrix dot org i believe i i need to check because <laughs> i i i went uh through the article not the not their main website you can get it at um, nxos.org there we go <laughs> you can meet nitrix powered by yeah, debian kde plasma and frame and frameworks and app images yeah yeah uh I mean, it, it falls into curiosity thing. Like, this is something to play around with. Same thing with, like, Silver Blue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely something to play around with, but um, there's a well above my uh, recommended daily amount of chaos would be introduced. Maybe this is like swimming. I was like, that's a lot of weird moving parts. It's really cool that somebody's trying to do it. Not for me, though. Yeah. Why? Because I'm old and I'm boring. That's why. M well... Another reason I like this distro so much is that they made their own, you know, desktop manager, and it's it's really nice. Again, it, it, I mean, it it's does. KDE. Yeah, it, it's KDE, but it has some gnomish elements to it, so it's a nice kind of in between. And yeah, it, uh, as Ven was saying, it's nxos.org. Woohoo! There be it bold, is. Be different. <laughs> Powered by Debian KDE Plasma and Frameworks. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it's KDE, which unfortunately is an XFCE, and we all yeah, know. Yeah, which is XFCE. Ben's favorite. <laughs> it's not even my opinion. It's just simple fact. <laughs> is the best desktop manager in the history of ever. <laughs> Nothing is as good as XFCE. <laughs> I mean, yes, don't believe the rhetoric. Don't believe the lies. It is the one true desktop for uh, the unifying desktop for everyone under Linux, no matter what. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe if you're a huge fan of KDE, you won't like it. Definitely mm -hmm. not GNOME. I don't think GNOME users would like it. Come to think about it, if you got some weird, wishy, flippity doodah desktop, you probably wouldn't like it yourself. Why? Because it's boring. It's plain. It's incredibly stable. All things I look for in a window manager. And it's got a new release in the works. 418 is on the way. Now, our final release is expected between December 15th and December 29th, 2022. Subject to change. A couple of new things in this. One I kind of like. They have an option to keep the panels above windows. Oh, You'll very never nice. guess what that does. You might have guessed. Okay, it keeps panels <laughs> above windows. So if you have panel options open in the background, it's just going to stay on top. I like that. Apparently, you can change fonts in the clock applet. Yay, question yes, mark. I guess I'm... I've never... um pulled that up to think about it or look at it but it is there now one thing i do enjoy <laughs> thunor has a reload icon like okay i had to look i had to look what i was reading this like does it i'm like yeah there it is Over there. <laughs> that's been replaced with a search yeah. and a new recent item has been added to thunor in the places so it'll take you back give you a list of all the places that you've been on your travels they do point out Wayland migration is in the works. It's only 10 years away, so don't worry about it too much. I mean, eventually. And like most XFCE updates, I am so happy to report that you probably wouldn't even notice it if you've been upgraded from 4.16 to 4.18. And that's what I love about this project. Mm -hmm. Why? XFCE doesn't change things for the sake of change. Yeah, 
it, it makes an improvements that all us users like and need, but it's it's not glaring in your face. Not a ma no no major desktop changes. <laughs> no, Jill, we need to completely rethink X Y Z. Yeah, <laughs> and change the way it's done. Why? Because that's what happens when you leave a bunch of software developers around and designers and say, "Hey, develop and design." You get things like that. XFC just works, and XFC yeah. has stuck to you know its its roots. You know, it was basically a CDE with a glittery body kit, and it's grown yeah, a lot true. from there. But it, mm -hmm. I always say this. I mean, you, you can rewind like twenty years ago and give me like the first version of XFC I laid my hands on, you could take that version and dump him right in 2022 and be like, yeah, I got this. Same thing. Done. Try that one, Gnome. Yeah. <laughs> Try that with KDE. <laughs> well, with Gnome, usually you need some extensions. <laughs> and with KDE, you need to dig deep to find all those settings. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. Like, um, uh -huh. let's see, like KDE 1.3. You take that version of Jill. Playing with KDE 1.3, like <laughs> dump that you know Curd Chill 2022 with the KDE Plasma, and like have that perfectly. You know you you'll be able to figure this out, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I I actually do uh, use KDE Plasma now and again, and um, but what I was really happy with with this latest release is um, you know one of my updates actually solves. A simple but annoying problem. <laughs> so you can now change the font style and size in the XFCE clock applet, <laughs> which Ben just said earlier. But to me, that was a major deal because often I can't read the clock applet because the font is too small because I'm half blind. So, <laughs> so especially on my 4K monitor. In fact, I'm, I'm in an XFCE right now and I can't read that clock applet. It's just too tiny. So <laughs> that makes me happy. And um, there are now uh, four clock layouts, uh, date only, time only, date and time, and time and date. And yes, so there has been so many, the, some of the biggest changes have been in the, the Thunar file manager. Thunar now has a new book, bookmark menu in the sidebar and has a new split view option for easily dragging and dropping for those of us who like to use other file managers like MLFM and PCMANFM. Now we have uh, the, the power of the trees, <laughs> which is really nice. And there is a new image preview of image files, which you can change the settings to embedded or standalone preview. So finally, that that that's something we we have in most of our modern modern file managers that we have now with Thunar, and it is you know just nice to see Thunar getting so much love and getting these much needed updates that put it in uh, the conformance and with the features of other modern file managers. It's so, a file manager that it needs to manage files. Yeah, but, but these, I, these. I know this is like the here's here comes the problem. But but <laughs> here, here's some other things we can glue on it into the side, and we'll get nice, big, and bloated like the other file managers. Oh no, but but they do it a good job of adding features, but keeping the bloat minimal, so that it still runs on, on a little amount of RAM. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Jill in marketing. Thunar slightly less bloated. <laughs> it's, it's it's Rodentia OS after all. Oh, <laughs> the little mouse OS. Always been a fan of XFCE, and <laughs> you know, again, not it's not for everybody though. Yeah, that, that's not. true. Um, if yeah. you if you want you know, like you're a desktop manager to do something more than like desktop manager, you know, go install Windows 11. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, XFC is a really nice in between, between kind of like the After Step and GNOME or KDE. It's a nice in between. Well, I there. like After Step. The problem is mm -hmm. After Step is After Step or Enlightenment in the same camp. Both of those, Enlightenment more so. I really want yeah. to like Enlightenment, <laughs> but um, Enlightenment is about as stable as a rabid emu on a methamphetamine binge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, man. Yeah, the sound system does occasionally crash, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, all of it occasionally crashes. Like I, I go and I play around with Enlightenment at least 
twice a year just because yeah you know i i like i dig the aesthetic man i'm a 90s kid i'm just like man i like that look it's, it it looks like our desktops used to look in like 2000 2001 just out of the box and i'm digging it but yeah same here. um and for all i know the same thing could apply to kde same thing could apply to um gnome xfc doesn't crash like you could say yeah, maybe it's, because it's like less complex of a project that's fine however it doesn't crash like the idea of like my window manager and my desktop anything going wrong there is such a foreign idea i will take a screenshot of it of like look at this yeah <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> what i it's mean it's like that. getting a steam survey <laughs> it's such a rare thing and <laughs> it is how they keep on doing the i do hope that they uh face the uh mr anderson of wayland because it's not going away now like it mm -hmm. it's it's a real thing and i want them uh yeah you, you know they they're it's it's gotten further than um like yes we acknowledge wayland exists thank you for attending our ted talk uh, <laughs> it's gotten further along in that i mean work is starting to be done on it yes because when i eventually have to switch everything over to wayland when x is you know left to people with a uh, yeah, you know, we're going to be seeing the kids running X Windows on their vintage gaming PCs. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's what you run yeah. on your vintage PCs. X, X11. Oh, yeah. I I still frequently run uh, TWM, Window Maker, Rat Poison. Oh, I'm talking yeah. about just X itself. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, this is what we used to use before Wayland came out. And, uh, you know, and all the compositors yeah. on top of that. X11. <laughs> I want um, X386. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember those days? <laughs> Installing yeah. those Slackware uh, floppy disks with X Free. <laughs> Getting X up and running uh, back yeah. in the day was an adventure, especially with the CRTs and figuring out uh, scan frequencies. And uh, shh, it was it yeah. was a dark times. It was a dark <laughs> times. You got guides online now. Yes. Which make it. I love it when I'm like, well, this is kind of difficult to get set up. I had to do this and this and this. And I'm like, Okay, now I want you to imagine how difficult it was setting that up without the internet. Mm -hmm. mm. And and that's what, we, what the time we lived in, Ben. <laughs> and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I don't take any pride in that whatsoever. I'm like, man, see, this is why I like new stuff so much. That's why I, I, I kind of have that aversion to like, those are the bad days. Like, we've moved on. Why do you want to revisit yeah. that? And you're like, but nostalgia. I'm like, have fun. Uh, give me some new stuff. I want to play with the new stuff. I like living in this crazy new future, and I'll pick up three tablets and wave them around. Like, these were in the TV shows when I was a kid. Now I have more <laughs> of the house rolls. Yes. Plug and so. play Linux is such a nice thing. <laughs> Get on the XFC team. Yeah. Um, I'm running Debian testing, so I'll probably be able to play around with it. And nice. I don't know. I haven't run apt update today. It might even be sitting there, some of the earlier packages. Mm -hmm. So. Mm hmm. We need to talk about a Raspberry Pi replacement, the TriPi. But before we do that, I want to take a minute to thank everyone mm -hmm. who supports us at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. So I managed to stick all of this stuff together, put it together. We've got a little shoestring budget, but we get to speak our mind. We're not beholden to anyone, which mm -hmm. is always like the initial thing. Like, you might not like what we say, especially like, you know, when Jill, when she gets angry and starts cursing at everything. <laughs> no. um, you're like, man. Jeez, what do you really think? And uh, but we're able to say it, you know, which is cool. That was always like part of the dream. We got a couple of things: linkschemecast.com. We got Amazon wish zones. We got merch. We got new hoodies. We got Frank mm -hmm. files. That's right, Frank. You're back on the store, buddy. Yeah, you are. And there's even a, a Razorback tank top that I can there buy. It is. That's yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about everybody, whatever, sticking those products together. We got some Frank bags, and these these are updated. These are the 2022 designs. Yeah. So if you had an original Frankophile shirt, mm -hmm. you might want to mm -hmm. update this one. <laughs> Do we have anything else? Uh, come hang out with us. If you do support us on Patreon, you get access to our Discord. If you like this Discord. show, we got the super mm -hmm. long extended version, the live and uncut version in podcast format on your custom RSS feed. You get some snack picks at projects that I'm working on. Access to our track mania thing. <laughs> Gangs and gangs of other stuff that I'm like I've been told on multiple occasions. It's like Vin, you need to put more of that stuff behind the paywall. And I'm like, no. I mean, if this was a get rich quick plan, I'm failing at it. So it's Aww. not. <laughs> <laughs> but we do appreciate your support <laughs> and uh keeping us loud live and independent. Now, can we talk? 
what do you think about uh we were waxing poetic i was thinking about man i'm i'm a little worried about the future of raspberry pi now we'll get around to it yeah. in just a minute jill's going to tell you about something that is exciting and mm -hmm. i'll agree it is exciting but it kind of makes me think oh this could be a problem down the road yeah, very true, Van, and we will we will touch on that in I mean, just a minute. Nobody died, Jill. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, no. So, friendly Alec has just announced the Nano Pi R 6s It's a new single board computer that is based on the Rockchip RX thirty five eighty eight S SOC, and one of the unique features of this cute little single board computer is that it has three. Ethernet ports. Yes, there are three holes. <laughs> Not four holes or four lights. You hear that, Picard? <laughs> there are three holes. <laughs> and uh, supposedly, uh, two ports operate at about 2.5 gigabits per second, with a third capable of supporting up to one gigabits connection. So that's good to know, and we will find out uh, whether that's true or not uh, pretty soon. So, but the, the NanoPi R6S has eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM running at uh, 2,133 megahertz and 32 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage. And it also, um, with the Rockchip chipset, has four ARM Cortex A76 cores clocked up, clocked up to 2.4 gigahertz, plus four Cortex A55 cores limited to 1.8 gigahertz. And at launch, the NanoPi RXS supports Android 12 and Linux distributions, including Debian 10. I'm going to blow them up. I'm going to yeah. blow them up a little bit, Jill. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the screenshots now. They did a horrible job with the copy and paste of the monitors, but they weren't going uh, for realism here. They were. Yeah. My problem is that's Debian 11 desktop. Yeah, wallpaper. I was just, I was just, I just you know, it. good, good, because that was something I noticed on the website too. <laughs> and they, they also have their own friendly core focal light and friendly uh, WRT distros. It doesn't support Ubuntu yet, but is a, they're in the process of making that happen. And it will retail for, for $119 US, but if you want the aluminum enclosure included, it will cost $139. So, pretty sweet. This looks like a really nice, uh, powerful board. On behalf of everybody, board. something we were talking about in the beginning of the show. <laughs> Look at it. I mean, it's pretty nice, right? A nice little board. It's yeah. Nice, nice little case, right? That's a nice yeah. little case. It's got, you know, the Cute. LAN 1, you know, 2.5 gig and WAN HDMI. <laughs> nice metal. You know, it's got some fins on it. We all know friendly alike. That's not a $20 case. Yeah. <laughs> at, Aww. Try to get 20 bucks for that. Now you're going to get 20 bucks for that because if you're buying that, you're going to need a case for it. And you're like, yeah. hey, we, we have the case for it. I'm like, fine. And then again, you're also going to get it because it's <laughs> in stock and it's $119. That's yes. why you're still going to get $20 for it. Eight gigs of RAM, three Ethernet ports, 32 gigs on storage, USB C. And you know <laughs> what? They even have their own distribution, which is, you know, based on mm -hmm. WRT. Yeah. Because guess what? You know, if you got holes for three ether doodles, like, hmm, I want, yeah, you probably might want to use it as a router or something like that. Now, mm -hmm. here's some of the things I was thinking about when we say this, because last week we were talking about the x86. Yes. Intel board, that was $160. And I'm like, man, this makes sense in a world where you can't get a Raspberry Pi 4 mm -hmm. 8 gig at all. And even if you can find uh, scalpers with them, they're two hundred dollars plus. So one hundred and sixty-five. Now we have one hundred and nineteen. We're talking about a rock chip. Like this, this thing does the happy dance all over what's behind. Yeah. You know, the three plus year old um, ARM CPU and Raspberry Four. And that brings me to like something I'm curious about seeing. I want to know what the SBC single board computer is. You hear me say that a bunch of times. That's what I mean by it. The SBC landscape is going to look like ten years from now. Because it's been roughly mm -hmm. 10 years since the first Raspberry Pi showed up. We, we remember those, right? Yeah, we bought them. absolutely. It was like 2012. Yeah. They were released and we bought them like candy. We did buy because they were cheap. They were silly cheap. cheap. They were like 35 <laughs> bucks, right? Uh-huh. And you could do mm -hmm. a ton of neat things with them. Like 
you just buy three or four. Oh, a new one came out. Let's buy five or six and just have them laying around. A lot of kids bought them. A lot of teenagers, young adults, you know, people in uni, people getting ready to start businesses. They learned a lot about them. They learned to solve problems with them. They learned the, and they contributed to the software ecosystem to the Raspberry Pi and it flourished. Mm Mm-hmm. And now those same people 10 years later, you know, they're in the chain of, you know, hey, we got problems at work. I happen to know of a Pi based solution, you know, and we're seeing that. And we've talked about uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation a couple of weeks back. They're like, hey, the Pi Foundations, and we're, we're filling orders right now, but we're filling our business orders right now. Kind of a self fulfilling, yeah. you know, like, hey, we got to get these business. And a lot of those business orders came from those kids. I shouldn't call them kids, but, you know, young adults, 20-year-olds that are now in that position of, like, hey, you know, we can fix all these problems, you know, compute modules and stuff like that. We're deep into year three. They didn't stop making kids, Jill. Yeah. I checked. Um, (laughs) We got a generation coming up. We're like three years deep. They just can't buy a Raspberry Pi. They've been buying other stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. O-droids, O-droids, banana these, pies, right. orange pies. You got to get something to get your hands on to play with. And, you know, they've been contributing yeah. to that ecosystem and whatever, you know, rock chip type stuff, orange pies. And they're going to be bringing that with them, you know, fast forward seven years from now when they're the ones that are going to be in the positions to, you know, at least be in the chain of like, hey, we need to solve this problem. It's not necessarily going to be. I have a pie based solution. It's going to be maybe I have a nano pie based solution or an orange pie based solution, something based on rock chip or whatever they've done. And of course, this is good for the ecosystem and it's going to spread things out. That's something I worry about the Raspberry Pi Foundation not thinking down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good point, Vin. We were talking about this be- before the show and it it is. You know, there's been this three year hiatus where it's hard to get Raspberry Pis. So, yeah, it's, the schools are yeah. having to order order um, something the single board computers from other companies. Yeah, it's it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. You got to get them. You know, uh-huh. Apple understood that they <laughs> gave yeah. their computers to uh, school children. Microsoft has understood that. You like get them running off as young. It's uh, ultimately, you know, because I got a lot of love for the Raspberry Pi Foundation is why I yeah. am even thinking about that. Like mm-hmm. things are going to change. Like you, there's a reason you know, they say, you know, stay with the one that, you know, you came to the dance with, you know, because like yeah. those are your people, like that grassroots community. And that that's how that halo effect spreads out when those people get into positions to, you know, that's how Linux has worked its way into the server ecosystem. Yeah. You know? us sweaty gooey nerds when we were teenagers and Linux came out, guess what? We grew up, we got jobs and we got management roles. Mm-hmm. Guess what we knew how to use? Linux. And, uh, you know, that's how Raspberry Pi, unless I'm completely missing the point, feel free to write in or come on the show and tell me, like, you're completely wrong about how this works. Uh, mm. You know. Yeah, they need to, I think the Linux, the Raspberry Pi Foundation needs to do a better job at maybe balancing, giving a little bit more to consumer as opposed to just focusing on business. Because I, 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 it's really I think you're hard right. to cut off that money spigot, though, isn't it? It is, and I understand that it is, it is hard. But we need to be able to go to you know micro centers and the local stores and be able to pick up the Raspberry Pi and know it's always going to be there when we need it. Or not us, or um, online, you yeah. know. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> you know, both of us are in a position where well, if I absolutely had to get a Raspberry Pi, what am I going to do? I'm going to pay like $250, $275 yeah. from a scalper. But uh-huh. do you know what? Yeah. 14-year-old me, 16-year-old me, I didn't have 200 pounds to spend on it. But, you know, you, you might be able to save up over, you know, a summer, you know, like 75, 80 bucks, something like that. So that option, you know, that need hasn't gone away. You know, yeah, you, you got to give there. the Raspberry Pi Foundation all the credit for kind of creating, Absolutely. making that accessible. Yeah. But man, everybody, you know, because it has went from, you know, when you think about it, well, as long as we've been doing this show, like pre, like this just outage for consumer, mm-hmm. we, you, we would get like, oh, look, and somebody else is making a Pi like device. No, oh, look, there's another Pi like device. It's not a yeah. Raspberry Pi, though. And why don't just buy a Raspberry Pi? Nowadays, 
that conversation doesn't exist. Like, hey, that's in stock. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a hundred bucks and it's, you know, for all intents and purposes, like the things we've been talking about at least the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Have not been Raspberry Pi. <laughs> not Raspberry Pis. And it, yeah. way more powerful than the Pi 4. Yeah. Like just. I mean, you know, the last uh, big device that Raspberry Pi had was was the uh, Raspberry Pi 400, 400 yeah. which I adore and I love. And they went out on such a bang on that. And that was during COVID. Mm -hmm. But after that, we've just kind of had silence and it's hard to get stuff and that that little computer you know really can revolutionize you know the raspberry pi in the in the schools i mean we already had this see high it penetration in the schools yeah um, but i'm also yeah. like the problem with the raspberry pi 400 is you get people like me like i need like tinker boards yeah yeah and you, not I, case. I don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't have room for a bunch of like keyboards and stuff filling up my desk yeah you know? It's but for for the schools and the kids and maybe the schools and learning um, and hacking, <laughs> and they really needed a see. This is I, I want to see what the Raspberry Pi Five is. I I want some <laughs> signal, some blips, some hope to reach yeah, out. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm hoping it's right? coming soon, and we'll get get those boards. Yeah, something <laughs> something because uh, you know we we're talking in the pre-show. Like I'm probably not going to buy this, but only because I'm pretty sure i'm just gonna buy that x86 uh board yeah it was like 160 that makes bucks sense. yeah because <laughs> that's gonna be a fun thing i know i will be able to find it you support and there we go you know and it's priced again that board doesn't make sense in a world where you can get a raspberry pi 40 gig for 75 bucks but you can't get that right now mm -hmm. so you know 119 dollars looks like a deal for a nano pi rs6 mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, hey, if you guys are listening, you want to send me one, make sure you include uh, that overpriced $20 case. Too. <laughs> All right, Jill. Uh, we Yay. have overstayed our walk. We got to get out of here. We got to okay. roll. We got to bounce. We got to roll some credits. And how do we do that? I hit that button. Boom. Aww. Yay. Thank you to our Theron, who's okay. one of our advisors. And Jill. <laughs> Oh, and there's, of course, Ven and Jill, the hosts. <laughs> but we also have Omegas as an advisor, and we have wonderful executive producers, Barbrant, Atomic, Mike, Empty, and our Chicago people, Abstraction, Super Dust Out. These are all our, our Patreon levels. <laughs> sea Monsters, Ronaldo, uh, Treadgills, Death Notes, uh, Stephen B., <laughs> Sherlings, lots of them. I can't read that that font. <laughs> Aw, we love you all. Thank you for watching. All right, everybody. All our wonderful patrons. Ho, ho, ho! Merry and viewers. Second week in November. Yeah. Ben <laughs> is in <laughs> is in the spirit. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>